Okay, let's take a look at what's new in Hitch to our graphics version 2.10. We have an absolute load of things to get through, so let's get to it. The first thing you might notice is there is now this little network drop down selector here. And what that allows you to do is decide what IP addresses are showed in these URLs here. So, for example, I have it set up to this computer, localhost, or I can change it over to the IP address of this computer on my network, which is uh, 0.15. And then I can open the windows from there or copy and paste these URLs into my other pieces of software and programs. Let's open up a few things so we can take a look at what else is new. So I'll just open up one of my rundowns here on the side, um, move that over a little bit and then open up an output for this. And you might see right away, one of the new changes is in the theme options. So let's just launch straight into that. You can see here in this new themes selector, I have my OG rainbow theme selected. And if I open the background section here, you can see I have now one and two colors. So I can choose a gradient to run from left to right, right to left, up or down. Those are my options in here. Of course, I can just choose none and it just sticks with the first color. But if I choose a gradient, then it uses both of those colors. Another new thing in here actually is this new glow option. So it uses that first color and you can see it's adding a little glow around the graphic something that's quite nice for certain use cases. It would be quite hard to key this on a green screen background, but if you're using the transparent background method, then this will look really nice opening up in things like OBS and vMix and stuff like that. Before we leave the theme section, I just want to take a look at what else is new. If you scroll down to the bottom, we have some new things for the big timer. So you can set thicknesses and how you want your edges to look. And then at the very bottom, you now have an export option for themes. So you can export a theme from one project and then use the import to import it into another project. That should work out nicely for you. Other new things in the new graphics section here, it actually sorts things a little bit differently. So you can type in something, for example, lower third here. I'll type that in and I can see all of the lower third style graphics. I can also type in the new type of graphic, which is a pro graphic uh, video. Oh, I can spell it right. And you can see that I can add a video graphic into my production. Of course, I'll need to add a video for this. So in the media section, there now is an option to import a PNG, JPEG, GIF, SVG, MP4, or WebM. And with that, you can import a video to use here. So I have a sample MP4 on my computer here. I'm going to open that up and just let it import in. I can always watch it here just to make sure everything works as expected. Or I can head back over to the rundown, edit this graphic, and then choose the video from my video selector. And you can see again here, you can always just preview the video in here, make sure it's the right video you expect it to be. I have a couple of controls right now. I can loop and mute the video. So I'm just gonna set both of them to true. It's going to be muted and it will be looping. And when I hit show, it'll show that video. And as you can see there, it is playing. It is muted. There was no audio on this video anyway, but it is muted and it will run a countdown. And what you see here is it'll turn red whenever it's the last five seconds of the video. So in a second or two, the text is going to turn red. So you know the video is over in five seconds. In our case though, it's going to loop the video as you can see on the little looping thing there, and it will loop it and go back to the start again. It just keeps running. I can see I have some improvements to make there for videos, but in general, the video will just keep running and looping, or you can choose to turn that off. And then when it gets to the end of the, um, the video's length, it will disappear again, and the video will be done. There you go. A nice little addition to this version is when you right click and hit duplicate, you'll notice that the duplicated graphic appears below the graphic that you duplicated, something I've wanted to add for a long time, but now it appears below that and you can instantly start editing that duplicated graphic, make it a lot easier to duplicate things right next to each other and then edit them instantly. The next thing I wanna show you is the improvements to the score graphic. I've just imported two images. I just happen to have on my computer here. Apologies, Alex and David, but you're gonna be used for this section. If I head over to the rundown and add a new score graphic, I can add that. And now instead of a team color, I can choose a team image. So here I can choose some images. I know that this is Alex's face and this is David's face. And whenever I show that graphic on screen, you can see David and Alex have just popped up in the graphic. David is team two, Alex is team one. So that's how you can use a logo for a sports team, add it in the score graphic. Thanks Alex and David for uh, being a part of this video without knowing it. We now have some new transition options as well. So in the transition section over here in the theme editor, we have a new scale and a new scale and fade. I really like the scale and fade one. In fact, if I head back to my rundown here 
and I turn this video back on again, you can see there that it scales up from the center and fades in at the same time. Really nice little animation style. It looks quite nice on things like lower thirds and stuff like that. I really like it. All right, good luck with the new version of H2R Graphics. Have some fun with the pro video graphic and let me know if you have any issues along the way. Thanks for watching.